All right, Kevin, before we get started, we all know you've been waiting for a long time. So tell the folks at home how great it was to finally see Silk Song. I see that lots of cursing goes here was added into the notes for me, but I don't want to participate in this segment. I don't want anything to do with it. It's not funny anymore, and I don't want to talk about it. Wow. Let's just start the real show then. Jesus Christ. Step into video game land. Welcome to Fine Time. Fine time. <laughs> Hello, party people. Hello, Nintendo people. It's your boy, Dre. It's my boy, Steve. Wowie zowie. <laughs> I don't think that's how he said it, Kevin. And in, in, uh, almost had Mario Odyssey, too. In uh, Mario Wonder, <laughs> I feel like it was a little more uh, whimsical. Wowie zowie. <laughs> okay, that was closer. Is that? That was definitely closer. closer okay. to absolutely. Wow. I, I forget it. You got uh, the uh, the agglomation between you two. We'll we'll have to do. Well, you want to sit here and talk all this shit. I mean, you know what? Leave me alone. Okay, so like uh, that was closer. Uh, you know. Okay, fine, fine. You want to hear mine? <clears throat> fine. Wowie zowie. No, no, no. That no. was just Andre saying wowie zowie in a slightly up pitched voice. Jesus fucking tell him, Christ. Steve, fine. Tell him. Uh, you're the one that egged him on. I think you could be a little nice at least. Okay, but we got it. We we know what's coming right when we start talking, when he says, all right, let's get into the games, shall we? And then we're, we're immediately going to be butting heads. And I'm trying to set up a united front between you and I in preparation. Oh my God! <laughs> I'm already being conspired against. Well, Go you, ahead, you Steve. are. <laughs> let's. Oh my let's lord! Let's not skip ahead. And I think it's really just us versus the conferences today. No. Oh, he's already mad about the thing I'm going to say in the future, like in five minutes. Fine, let's get to it then. If you want to yeah, get mad well, at I me, I mean, I will. <laughs> I uh, you've had some bad takes before, but and usually I can like. To some degree, at least see <laughs> where you're coming from, right? You just you just did the you just did the 1998 episode, and and once again tore apart Ocarina of Time, which we've heard before, and 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 I, I don't agree with it, but I can I can emphasize with where you're coming from to a degree, so I don't condemn you. But you're you're right off the bat with the direct your take is oh my is god just <laughs> irredeemable. Can we this- introduce the people to the show first, Kevin? <laughs> no, he wants no. This is great. He's yet he's mad at my take in the notes before I even say it, before we even get to the rat. No, I love this shit. I love this shit. Every all of my bad takes should come with like a two minute preamble of why it's bad. <laughs> yeah, like a, a listener advisory for garbage takes coming up. <laughs> It is overwhelmingly terrible. (laughs) Wow. Okay, fine. Okay, let's get to it. As you can tell, we don't have any now playing. Yes, we've been playing video games. We'll get to those next big deal. A lot of stuff happened. Obviously, Summer Games has happened um, now getting to be about a week and a half ago. And we're going to talk about that. But first, we absolutely have to talk about the Nintendo Direct. And before we get into it, I'm just going to say it. I don't think I'm being prisoner of the moment here. This was the best direct of all time. Like, I don't even see like we could go back through the entire switch era and maybe look at some like good announcements as far as just like pure, like amount of things that I'm interested in. And I thought were great. Kevin, I don't see how it's better. Any of them were better than this. I, I, I struggle to argue with that. I, yeah, especially this late i mean we we don't we don't even deserve such a good lineup for for the final year of the switch i mean I, I honestly believe if they would have given us half of the quality that was in this direct i would have been 100 percent fine with it and said all right we're gonna have a good send off for the switch but they they fucking went hard yeah steve have can you recall one better than this no and my mics excuse me and my expectations were already pretty low 
I was just sitting here going, look, if they have remakes and remasters to coast us through the rest of the year until Switch 2, that'll be a win. But no, we got a bunch of original games coming until the the rest of this year coming up. And the sheer number of them. There there was definitely still that crowd out there saying, well, I guess no uh, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess uh, oh, remasters. There'll on, be a on slow Switch. month for Switch 2 and you'll get them. OK, just relax. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're they're going to happen. They're just saving that ammo for another time. And like Steve said, I was expecting all the remakes and remasters. And the first game they showed, I actually thought was a remake or remaster. But then it quickly revealed itself to be an original game. And that would be Mario and Luigi Brothership. And let me go first here so I can get to my bad take so you guys can yell at me. So... They were showing that opening cinematic, and I, like I said, I kept thinking, okay, which one are they remaking now? This is totally a 3DS game. And then it dawned on me, uh, this is this is a new one. And that was not a good feeling to have. Like, and I, I'm kind of sorry to be negative about this up front, but like, this did not really look the part of a brand new Mario and Luigi game in the year of our Lord 2024. Like I may not like paper Mario, but like, or super Mario RPG for that matter, two other like remakes slash remasters that came out this year. But guys, those games look immaculate. Even paper Mario with the frame rate cut in half, that game looks crazy. The effects on that are crazy. I don't think either of you can sit here and say that Mario and Luigi is on that level. I just, I don't see it, Kevin. That doesn't mean that. Look, I'm buying this day one. I love Mario and Luigi. OK, I do. I'm going to get this game. I'm not like dismissing it. I just don't think it really looks like graphically. Eh, I don't think so. Man, and I just I, I I really struggle to see where you come from saying I don't think it got the same budgets as as some of these remakes. And and because I I, I 100 percent feel like the art style that they were doing was fully intentional because it's, it's the, the key art that those games have always used brought to life and, and very well done in, in my opinion. I don't, I, I, I see like zero merit to, to like any way of looking at, at, at the graphics of this game and feeling like they, you know, were restrained whatsoever it, it looks exactly to me like what i'm assuming the developers were intending it to look like without bounds um and and, and i and i was enamored with it i also i didn't know right off the bat whether it was a remake or not um i think that's kind of outside of the discussion if it was a remake which it you know it you could have been based on the first 10 seconds of that trailer um you know, it just would have been very, very well done and nice looking. I think it looks unique and it's clean and, and it looks full f- featured. I 100 percent cannot see where you're coming from on this one. I, I really can't. I assume Steve feels the same way. I mean, yes, we have the box art running in the game. I mean, and Alpha Dream's dead. So I must, I can only assume that they scooped up Alpha Dream and stuck him in the cage to have him work on this thing because we don't have any real info on what's going on there. I, I, I did, so what I really want to know is how, how do you walk away from this and say, eh, mid? <laughs> I told you, I'm getting it. The gameplay looks fantastic. I'm just talking graphics here. Like this, like fidelity wise, this looks worse than like Super Mario RPG and like as like fidelity wise. And that game is running at 60. This trailer was 30. I'm sure the game is going to be 30. We'll talk about that when the game actually comes out. I'm not going to get into frame rate talk right now, but trust me, it'll happen. But just on, on the surface, I was like, this really just looks like the 3DS graphics on Switch, which I guess... It doesn't have to be a bad thing. Again, I'm going to stress it. I'm getting this game day one. I love Mario and Luigi. Try and back that up. This looks like the 3DS graphics running on the Switch. Are you yeah. fucking blind? Come I on. I guess so. I, I guess on. I am. Okay. I, I will bite, even knowing full well I'm going to regret this in a few seconds. Let's say you were stuck running this entire project. What would the new Mario and Luigi game look like? And you're not allowed to quit. 
Um, first of all, we'll be running at 60. Um, secondly, I feel like the – how do I say it? There's something about the character models that just do not pop. Maybe – I don't think they necessarily need more geometry, but maybe there needs to be a certain amount of like fluidity and expressiveness. Like the cutscenes looked all right, right? Like that that opening part before they showed the title card. But then in like the gameplay, I was like, I feel like, oh, you know what it is? I just figured it out. I just figured it out. I think this probably should have been 2D. I think that's what I want. With the way the animations are and the way that style is, like maybe it should have been like just a 2D game. Huh? Like the like obviously not like like GBA looking 2D, but like modern 2D graphics. You guys are just staring at me. I feel like I, this I, is I, not I, like I, I feel I I think you're factually wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I also think you're splitting hairs for a Mario RPG. Uh, maybe I am. Look, again, I'm going to say it again. I'm getting this day one. I love Mario and Luigi. This is not going to stop me at all. Just a little underwhelming right now. Maybe as it gets closer to release, I can polish it up a bit, and I think it'll, it might look better. Who knows? Okay? But I'm here for it. Okay? I never I never thought I'd be yelled at by you guys for a game that I actually want to buy. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> Does it, does anyone want to buy Nintendo World Championships 2024? Because I absolutely do not. I I think I, because this was a budget title, and 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 I understand that I think we've dipped in the NES nostalgia well a little bit often. But I do like that like short bite sized speed run thing, right? This is this is not that far from NES Remix. I really liked that. Um, yeah, I think I can get budget title enjoyment out of this, but I'm I'm not I'm not head over heels with it either. Kevin, it's not far from NES Remix because it is NES Remix without the remix. So it's really like NES Mini, but it doesn't have any of the full games either. They 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 emphasize that on the small text on the bottom, no full games included. So you're, you're getting a bunch of NES demos that are timed. I had NES Remix for 3DS and I did not really, I, I didn't hate it, but I was just like, whatever about it so like a kind of a follow-up game like this just doesn't really excite me i guess i don't know not for me but it does have excite bike wow um okay (laughs) i talked about this next game a little bit on our previous creative endeavor when i got my ipad and they gave me like a free subscription to apple arcade for like three months i'm like sure I'll, i'll go nuts on that one of the games i played on there was fantasian and i was thinking Oh, God, this is stuck there forever. For those who don't know, this is like a a mobile RPG by um, you're going to have to help me with the Final Fantasy guy's name. I oh. don't remember his name. Sakaguchi. Yes. And music by Nobuo Uematsu, who I guess this is still under the umbrella of Mistwalker, I guess. Do, do you care? I mean, it looks it looks OK. It's weird to get like mobile games on a uh, actual system where it's like, OK, how do they demobilize this? That's a weird word. But well, 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 Andre, I care because I'm an Android owner and I was enviously looking over the fence at this game. So, <laughs> yeah, y- yes, I, I do want Fantasian Neo Dimension. It is for, fun for, for, for all of its uh, mobile mobileness. It's all right. I mean, it was fun. I didn't play too much of it. I wasn't like, oh, man, I'm head over heels about this. But the graphical style was hot. That's why I really played in the first place. Um, I found it funny that they had an entire section of cartoon games. Like, (laughs) here, here's all these wacky tunes. You know, (laughs) that was that was a thing. Uh, Mickey Mouse and Looney turns together in the same five minute span. What do you think this is? Roger Rabbit. <laughs> you know, the first crossover thing I ever saw when I was a kid was the Flintstones and Jetsons movie. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you remember that shit? <laughs> like, I, I think I saw it on TV and I loved it so much that, like, we got it on VHS later. I watched it a bunch. I really liked that movie for some reason. I'm yeah, sure it's I've terrible. I've never seen that when I was I was pretty little, but I I didn't I I don't think I was sorry for me, Steve. I thought that was 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 it bad in retrospect? I think it was bad when I was younger and watching it. But <laughs> he, he don't ask. He does never likes anything anyway. Don't ask him. 
Okay, Steve well, with his cartoon critic hat on it. Yeah, the, uh, Jesus okay. Christ. Well, you know what? I don't think anyone's going to actually like Looney Tunes' wacky world of sports because, on one hand, I really do think this should be a slam dunk. <laughs> but, but, you know, on the other hand, let's look at the track record of Looney Tunes games. Actually, re- don't, because it's god fucking awful. And moreover, Game Mill is publishing this one. And I don't need any additional talking out of this because of all the other crap they do, and neither should anyone else. I mean, that was rude. What if what if the game's good? Oh, it won't be good. Game mill, of course. Yeah, unlike other game mill efforts, though, this actually did look good graphically. Like, it didn't look like the usual plastic license crap. That doesn't mean it won't play like it, but it did actually look good, which is kind of dangerous because it'll entice people to buy it. Hey, remember when Nicktoons Brawl or whatever that was uh, totally got rid of Smash Brothers forever? Yeah. Is we've never Smash Brothers has never heard again. Can you imagine naming a company Game Mill? Honestly, like uh, it's just yeah, they churn, know what they churning are. out, churning yeah. out the, the crap, Fucking, right? But to turn every five minutes doesn't matter what it is. It's milling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They I know mean, what they are <laughs> and what they do. They know they're a game mill, so that's why they name themselves. <laughs> Um, Spe- speaking of knowing of what things are, Andre, last time we watched the Marvel's presentation and they led off with a game called Pharmasia. We tried to cover this. We, <laughs> we could did. not. Uh, Kevin, I don't know if you listened to, to it while you were off on uh, the last big deal, but we did cover the Marvelous thing because you were off and it was like we can cover a weeb thing. And we were baffled. The two of us were like thrown by this anime intro thing that they showed with like animals and cards by the way they, they showed farmagia gameplay where where were the cards what happened to the cards look you don't need cards because they remembered the game is called farmagia so you, you're gonna plant seeds in the ground and tend to them <laughs> and then they're gonna grow into little baby monsters I, I cannot believe you literally plant the wolves in the ground and they grow on a wolf plant and then you harvest the fucking wolves i cannot believe that's a video game how is that a video game <laughs> like I, I I get it. They had a video games can do whatever the fuck they want. That's why we love them. But like th- that was insane. Are are we worried? Do you have to water the wolves? Do you feed them little treats? Like if they start growing a mouth or something, and before they're like fully off the vine, or like how does that work? Yeah, like, is beef jerky like plant food, like fertilizer? You gotta yeah, like. <laughs> like you feed it like a Venus flytrap. You literally. Oh, my. Anyway, you guys keep th- asking these questions that I don't think you're going to find the answers. <laughs> well, I just want to know what happened to the cards we saw. They were like they didn't show us. Anyway, no. they- that was wild. Also, Farmagia, terrible name. Just an awful name. We, we weren't even sure how to say it. We were scared to say it out loud. We, we, we did last time we didn't even this felt like a game that was coming out in like February or something. This is coming out in November. So, well, some, someone might buy it. <laughs> I, I mean, look, I'm not disinterested. I just don't want to. I mean, it's just weird. Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. I do not like this game. And I am not buying this version. Also, can we stop calling stuff HD? It is so embarrassing. (laughs) It is so fucking embarrassing. Stop. It's like, you know what it's like? It's like it when your parents still call like a stereo system a hi-fi or something. We don't have to say hi-fi anymore. (laughs) Like, we don't have to say HD anymore either, guys. Please. I mean, I I get what you're saying. I like... In practice, it does make sense, but it, yeah, I, I, I also remember when HD was a you know buzz phrase back in two thousand and seven. <laughs> yeah, well before Wii U came out, and then they kept saying it that entire generation too. So embarrassing. Maybe this is a whole uh, another trade thing they have to say, like uh, how they have to keep calling everything the 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 whatever game. Maybe they have to call these remakes HD. Uh, maybe man i don't know why they can't just just say deluxe like they did for like kirby or triple deluxe well, the, okay that's that's a good that's a good point though because i was i literally a few days before the direct i was thinking i never i never finished i, bu- I bought this game on wii and i never finished it for whatever reason i thought i should do that and then this came up 
but uh, and I'm sure this will be the definitive version. But what was what what is de- like? Is there anything deluxe about this? We didn't have like you know new Funky Kong. Yeah, there, new there Funky was, mode. Why not new uh, Funky mode again? That was such yeah. a big viral hit. Like, like it just it was it was literally it was just like here's the game in HD. Yeah, it just doesn't. Yeah, it's just weird. I guess it, this is this is the most bare bones thing but unlike tropical freeze on switch this is not being ported by retro themselves it's being ported by someone else so do you guys think this would be a budget uh, would this be a full price game or do you think this is going to be uh you know 30 dollar title i i see 50 bucks like um mario versus Donkey kong i see 50 bucks man i'd like this to be 40 but you're probably right 50 I wouldn't buy it at 10. I really don't like this game. <laughs> I played it on Wii and I played it on 3DS. No thanks. Fool me twice. Shame on me. I'd get this on a sale. What I like is that this is January and with January, I feel like this really does mean Super Switch will be coming in March. Can we never? Can we? What do I have to do? What can I give you as an incentive, like a child, to never say Super Switch? Reveal the system with the real name. That That's what you do. Oh, my God. I have to sit through an entire summer and potential fall of Super Switch. Chances of it actually being named Super Switch are not 0%. I'm just saying they're not. Oh, my God. That will be the worst. That will be a worse name than Wii U. They can't call it that. There's just no way. 100% not trying to be inflammatory. I honestly, I would like it. I, uh, I know, like I it. know you would like it. That's why I, I know other people to... would like it. That's why I hate it. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway. <laughs> Let's talk about how right we were. I guess everyone was right, Steve, about Dragon Quest Three. So about a month ago, we talked about this last big deal that you tweeted a video and saying the Eldrick saga is going to begin or something like that. But it wasn't necessarily pertaining to Dragon Quest Three. They just tweeted that. So everyone started speculating. Does that mean they're doing the entire trilogy? And that's why Dragon Quest Three HD 2D has been taking so long. The answer was yes. We both agreed on that two weeks ago. They revealed it. What a great reveal, too. Release date, sh- shove off all the words, then pan out on the on the art. Mm. That was an excellent mm. reveal with the with the classic Dragon Quest theme. One of the better reveals for that kind of thing I've seen, I think. We're also resuming a great tradition in uh, selling one Dragon Quest 1 and 2 together again. <laughs> we gotta. Okay, who, who has more versions now? Dragon Quest 1 and 2 or Ease 1 and 2? Man, off the top of my head, I'd have to say Dragon Quest, but Ease is no slouch either. See, I, I see. I think I would still say Ease, but with this, Dragon Quest is catching up. There's a lot. Speaking of, of a lot, how about uh, Yuji Hori and his emotional support slime? He looked like someone who has been through a lot recently. Uh, he ha- all his friends are dead, okay? He, he I needs, know. He, he needs so the sad. emotional. I know. But you know what? He looked like he was in great spirits. And he keeps talking about how, you know, Dragon Quest Twelve is going to he's going to use as much of what was left over from pre-production to really bring it home, make it the ultimate tribute to his now dead friends. And hopefully he can do that. But as far as Dragon Quest three HD2D goes, please don't make that the actual title of the game because that's bad. Just call it Dragon Quest three or whatever, please. Um I really like the look of this game, but you guys know me. I was like, I want to see what this looks like on a real system. So I went to Steam afterwards and looked at the trailer on there. Man, that shit is crisp. That shit looks so good. I can't wait to play Dragon Quest 3 HD2D, but on PS5. I'm 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 sure you're right um, because we did admit when we went and played the Octopath or when I tried the Octopath Traveler 2 demo on PS5 rather than just Switch it did make a healthy difference more than I expected. But I do think just, just judging on this trailer, this is the best looking that I've seen HD 2d so far. Um, and, and it's always hmm. looked good, but God damn. You think so? Steve, I, think I might so. say, yeah. I might say, I think I, I mean, look, I haven't played the, we haven't played the game yet, but just on looks right now, I think I do like Octopath Traveler two, maybe like, Ooh. maybe think looks a little better than this. 
<laughs> See, this is a tough call to make because, like you, I also have not played Dragon Quest Three HD 2D yet. So, <laughs> and this looks really good. So, um, I'm also looking forward to the remakes of of one and two. I mean, I just, I, I guess, I should mention this. I appeared recently on Still Loading, the Still Loading podcast. And we talked about the original Dragon Quest. It was a really fun episode. I'll link it in the description, actually. So go ahead and check it out. I I really enjoyed how that came out, and I enjoyed talking to him. And while we were talking about the original Dragon Quest, he was in the midst of playing Dragon Quest II as of that recording, because he's doing the original trilogy plus Chrono Trigger. It's like a Toriyama thing. And we were kind of bitching about that game. So I think Dragon Quest 2 needs mo- a lot of help. So I hope these remakes give it that help that it needs. I, I can't make the comparison. I've never tried to, but I have tried one probably three, four times, like giving it the real try. I really, I, I would love to get through that game sometime, but it's all like every version is such a painful slog. It's got a lot of redeeming qualities, but it's also got a lot of garbage. I would love to see this cleaned up. You know, if it makes it significantly shorter, if it's less grindy, less sloggy, great. I'd, I'd totally be there for that. I think it should be, longer i think they should add elements i mean if they if it. they can do it longer great just make it so much less tedious it's it's not the length it's it's it is a it's a fucking tough playthrough in with modern day sensibilities yeah i was gonna say kevin that's that's dragon quest from 1980 fucking six man that's just mm. that that was that but, was jrpgs so kevin just be happy we got rid of the stairs button after the first <laughs> After the first one and two release, okay. <laughs> hey, that was. I, I get what you're saying. I can. I. I. I but I, I would still like to see it cleaned up. I would of like course. to see them. Oh, you, but have you tried Game Boy Color? I think that's significantly easier than. Yeah, like, I have tried Game Boy Color. It's still pretty fucking. It's. Uh, it's not really. See, that's the version I always suggest to everybody. But yeah, anyway, maybe that's maybe it. I need to try that one again. But it's. Uh, that's the one it's I played, not, and I still uh, think it needs help. It doesn't help. have the pace I need. <laughs> it, it, guys, that's just Dragon Quest. That's just the original game. It, it is what it is. It is. I, you know, I, I, I mean, think... You, you I, could say the same thing about the first Final Fantasy, but that feels playable, right? Yeah, but I also think Dragon Quest does too. But that that's, a, that's another topic. Can we talk about how Funko Fusion is going to be the hottest game of 2015? <laughs> because uh. I, I'm, I'm telling you... This shit is hot. Oh wait, it what what it's the year 2024? Oh no. <laughs> Guys, what what this felt so late. This felt so 2000 and late. <laughs> this had to be the most cynical trash I've seen from all these shows. You know, look at a Lego game. Yeah, you you build entire worlds out of Lego and you lean into the absurdity of it for a few for a number of hours. Okay, that's fun. Here, this is very much, we got these licenses for cheap. Let's make them kiss. <laughs> because you got Freddy Fazbear fighting a T-Rex from Jurassic Park, and it's like, who who gives a fuck? A while ago, Andre talked about how he doesn't like crossovers. And not, not to speak for him that much, this feels like all of that bullshit at once. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, you nailed it. Yeah. It's It's cynical and just please <laughs> yeah I, I i thought i thought literally the exact same thing watching this specifically with the the comparison to the lego games that's yeah steve nailed it look guys it's jaws from jaws <laughs> <laughs> jaws from jaws i felt like oh that pisses people off too because the shark isn't called jaws call the shark <laughs> jaws just like the monsters are called frankenstein and they get mad or whatever yeah call it jaws they'll they'll what get is the shark's oh. name then I don't think it has a name. It's the shark, but it's Jaws. Like Frankenstein's monster is Frankenstein. We, we, it's Frankenstein. We know yeah. what you're talking about if you say it's Jaws. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The shark is named Jaws. Well, go fucking read another book, nerd. Um, <laughs> 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 but what's up next? Oh, the new Dinpa Min. What the, can you explain to me what this was, yeah, Steve? I don't uh, even know what a, that a was. A long time ago, a long time ago on 3DS, Genius Sonority, the people that made a bunch of Pokemon games on consoles, had like this thing where you searched for little men on 
using AR and you made them run through little dungeons and things. I'm like, okay, this is neat. But then they just kept making them. And here we are in 2024 and they're still making fucking Dempa men. I just want to, I'm not going to play this one either. I, I I think I had enough after the first one, but I'd love to know how much they're making off of these and why the hell they won't let them, uh, you know, rework Pokemon Coliseum and XD for, you know, modern consoles because Dempa men, holy shit. I, I didn't think this we, we would be talking about this in the 2020s. I can't believe Pokemon XD hasn't ever had a re-release. That's kind of surprising. It's been 20 years, guys. Come on. You got to keep those original copies in their like $300 price range, I guess. Oh, my God. Or I can keep it in my Zofar's domain. Where, where do I download ROMs nowadays? CD Romance. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who said that? And now you just shut down another ROM site. Way Sorry. Go. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of more shit I don't want, Metal Slug Attack Reloaded. Guys, this isn't Metal Slug Tactics at all. From a few years ago when they had the Indie World presentation on that. It, it's a paid version of a mobile tower defense game. And if they didn't show off Metal Slug Tactics a while ago, the footage of it, saying, yes, it's alive and it's going to come soon. I would be mad that they really came out here and said, come by Metal Slug Tower Defense, even though it's free on your cell phone telephone. So you would have like Federation forced this game. You would have just gotten mad at it because it's not the met- the the Metal Slug <laughs> game that you wanted. Not, not only the Metal Slug game I want, the Metal Slug game they announced. <laughs> Okay, but now they're showing something else. (laughs) Something else that already exists. Not on Switch. I don't know why I'm trying to defend this. I don't give a fuck about a Metal Slug Tower defense. I don't know why I'm doing this. We talked about Fantasian before. That's a a game, you know, people would want to play. This is already on your cell phone, and now you want to sell it to me for $10. No. Um... I don't have a whole... (laughs) I don't have a whole lot to say about the... Uh, Nintendo Switch Online expansion pass stuff. I mean, Link to the Past, Game Boy Advance, Metroid Zero Mission, whatever. I guess it's cool because I guess the whole point of that is the Four Swords, right? Not necessarily the Link to the Past. I think. It, 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 yeah, it, 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 it's it's super cool having a way to do that in modern day. It fucking better not be, because you get the you know super crunchy sound in the first place, and then it's flanked by all the Ocarina of Time s- sound bites. Ha, 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 every time you push the sword button. <laughs> oh, they did that? Wow. Yes. I, I've, never, oh, yeah. I've never played this version, so I... It's it's fun for the first five seconds. In, in 2002, with my shield lamp, yes, this was the way to have Link to the Past everywhere, but not today with the, you know, I can play the real one on the other app. <laughs> The, the point of this is four swords yes. that that sound that sound bite though that's one of the reasons why i much prefer our u.s version of strider versus the japanese one because the japanese one every time you slash a sword strider goes ha and you know that's like that comes out the next available frame so you can just go ha 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 ha, ha, ha like jam on the button <laughs> But in ours, it doesn't have that sound bite. It just you just hear the shing of the cipher. So it's much better. You hear that shing, shing, shing. It's much more satisfying without the ha. So I'm, I'm glad they removed that for us. Um, I don't know why I'm talking about that now. Steve, we've asked them forever to make a rated M app for games on Nintendo Switch Online. Here the fuck it is. Finally. How long have we been? We've been calling for this since, God, I think even before fine time. Yeah, at least since the N64 app itself dropped because the apps themselves are rated T because I guess that's the limit when or imposed limit from these apps. Well, no, I think how it works is that like it's considered like a collection of games, like how Midway Arcade Treasures 2 had to be rated mature because there's Mortal Kombat on it, right? Whatever the highest thing is, that's what you have to rate it. Like the... the um. TurboGrafx-16 Mini is rated mature right? because a Snatcher and like Splatterhouse or whatever. So it, it just you have to get a rating. So I think these apps are considered a compilation. So you can't add stuff that would change. Its, I guess maybe you could, but that's a pain in the ass. It's much easier for them to make another app. So I'm glad that they did that. Turok and Perfect Dark aren't exactly things that I'm interested in playing on there. I mean, but still. Tur- Turok has a remaster that's only a few bucks everywhere, even on Switch. As much as I, as much as I, uh, you know, 
play up these services, spend three bucks when it's on sale and, you know, play it that way. Yep. I did that on PS5 recently. That shit is glorious. You could even, it's weird. You could even turn off the fog, which why would you do that? Because that's part of Turok. And then you can see like for miles, it's actually very uncanny. Don't turn off the fog in the Turok <laughs> remaster. <laughs> I would I would like to try my hand at seeing if I can u- use the control manipulation tools to get Perfect Dark to actually play something resembling modern uh, FPS controls, because I've tried that two controllers, you know, well, controller in each hand thing. And that was novel, but that's it's not doing it. Back when GoldenEye came out, Kevin, it, people came out with this very finangled way to go through the GoldenEye menu. And the changing the inputs menu on a system level. And they really went, look, guys, we have dual analog aiming for GoldenEye. Ain't that something? It was not, in fact, something. It was it was barely <laughs> well, I might, anything. I might, I, might, uh, I might try my hand at it. Oh, I my do- dumb ass is going to try again, but... Uh, I'm not expecting much. <laughs> I do remember that stuff making the rounds at the time. And I'm like, is this really going to work? I guess the answer was no. I don't care enough about GoldenEye to try it. So I never I never gave it a go. But like, yeah, Pete, that was making the rounds. Here's how you set it up. But how about at that rate? Just nah, play something else. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say about Phantom Brave, the lost hero, except that I cannot believe they had something in a Nintendo Direct presentation running at like single digit FPS. That looked (laughs) terrible. That was a slideshow. You guys saw this, right? I, I understand. I, I'm the frame I, I rate did, guy. I did but. not notice that on my first watch. You, and and after you mentioned it, because I watched it again last night. After that, um, it's it's definitely noticeable. I th- I think I kind of uh, wasn't interested, so I wasn't paying super <laughs> close attention. But yeah, it's bad. Yeah, I, I know Phantom Brave looks like the game Steve plays, but I haven't played any of them. But I'm looking at this and like this isn't going to be the one I start dipping my toes in with. <laughs> Oh, boy. Here we go, folks. All right. I'm sorry. I need to take over for a little bit here because this is my time to shine. When they showed Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection Arcade Classics, I lost my fucking mind. Everyone knows I'm a Capcom person. I love their fighting games. I love everything about Capcom, especially from that era. And... This is some cream of the crop shit. Never, ever cross my mind that this would be possible for many reasons, which I'll get to. And I want to get to them because I think a lot of people like maybe like Kevin might see this and be like, oh, Capcom is doing like another classic collection. Cool. (laughs) And that really like short changes how significant this particular one is. This might be one of the most significant collections of all time. I'm dead serious. And I I really want to say why in some detail. So, first of all, there were licensed games. And not just any licensed games, but Marvel. Obviously, everyone knows how impossible that is these days, right? I've wanted these games on other Capcom collections, but I just I knew they weren't feasible. Every time me and Vin covered a Capcom arcade stadium or this or that, it's like, can we or me and Steve about the Capcom beat up collection? Too bad they can't have the Punisher. Too bad they can't have Alien versus Predator. Now all worlds seem possible, Steve. Here they are. I, I can't wait to play the Punisher. I never played it before, so... This. It is so good. It is ridiculously violent in a way that I can't even believe they got away with at the time. <laughs> it is crazy good. It's amazing. You're going to have a great time. But yeah, all of them under one roof, all six of the Marvel fighters plus the Punisher, $50 is a steal. I know people are going to see 50 bucks for old games and be like, eh. I, no, this this is so much bang for your buck. It's unbelievable. Secondly, let's not forget what an absolute disaster Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite was in 2016. That game was a critical disaster and commercial disaster. And everyone assumed after that, that was the end of the line. This this relationship is never happening again. I I mean, Steve, you have been more likely to... I know you didn't have a PS4 at the time, but like, I'm sure you remember what a circus that was. Oh, I didn't forget, Andre. That's the reason why I thought we were never seeing any of this shit. <laughs> yeah. And, but here they are. 
The bridge has been rebuilt somehow. Here we are. And to borrow the famous tagline, everyone is here. X-Men Children of the Atom, Marvel Superheroes, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom, and Marvel vs. Capcom 2, plus The Punisher. All under one roof for the first time. And the real arcade versions for the first time. There were PS1 and Saturn ports at the time of like some of these games, but you largely did not want to play them, especially on PlayStation. Holy shit, they were fucked up. Like, I didn't even bother. I was such a arcade head fighting game head at the time where I was just like, I'd play anything at home. I dealt with like the PS one version of dark stalkers three, which was booty butt cheeks. It was wet, butt, but I did it anyway. No, I wouldn't even broach that for like X-Men versus street fighter on PS one. It was fun. You couldn't even tag. You couldn't tag out. It was not a two V two game anymore. The PlayStation didn't have the Ram to load all the characters. Ooh. That's how bad that shit was. You could use him as like an assist, I think, maybe. But like it was essentially a a 1v1 game with like the other character doing a couple things. It was terrible and it sounded like shit. It was just bad. Anyway, point being real ports for the first time of most of these games, if not all of them. Also, additionally, this is the first time any of these games have appeared on any Nintendo hardware. Like, that's pretty significant as well, I think. And Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is extremely significant here, not just because of its popularity. Obviously, that's the game everyone likes, but it's significant because it runs on the Sega Naomi hardware. And in case you don't know, Naomi was the arcade equivalent of the Dreamcast hardware. It was the same thing, one to one. So like Crazy Taxi, Power Stone, House of the Dead 2, Virtua Tennis, Samba de Amigo, Guilty Gear X, all these games run on Naomi. And to this point, Naomi has been notoriously hard to emulate. Steve, I think maybe a few years ago, M2 had that tweet about figuring out Naomi. Do you remember that? And we were speculating like, mm. oh, man. This is when they were still doing Sega Ages on, on right. Switch. Yeah. Do you remember that? And nothing really came about from that because Sega, ugh, whatever. Um, but Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is a Naomi game and it's appearing in this collection. So that's huge news for the future of arcade ports if they finally figured that shit out. That is a really big deal. And just to circle back around to The Punisher. Uh, like I said, it's not a fighting game. It's a beat em up. And it was like the first Marvel game from Capcom before before like X-Men for Children of the Atom and all the versus stuff like the Punisher is where it started with that relationship. And like I said, shockingly violent, loved it back in the day as a 12 year old, because why wouldn't I? And I can finally play it again. I've been wanting to play this for a long time. So that I think that's why this collection is super significant. Sorry for talking so fucking long. I just I <laughs> I had to get this out there just because this is really my shit. When I talk about Capcom and why they're like my favorite third party ever, the kind of stuff on this compilation is a large reason why. Well, without being a big nerd about it, I was just happy to see it all under one umbrella anyway, just being a guy occasionally going to arcades and playing you know, Marvel vs. Capcom and 2 and anyway, so I'm looking forward to, you know, maybe going online sometimes and getting my ass kicked, like I said already. You know, the Punisher. Didn't get to play the Punisher. Maybe I'll get to play with you. We'll see. We are playing the fucking Punisher, man. We are I absolutely mean, playing the Punisher. I'm, so what I really just want to say here is, come on, guys, do Capcom vs. SNK next. God, you will buy that shit, too. Come on. <laughs> Th that's very feasible now. CVS, CVS2, and don't forget SVC Chaos on Neo Geo, even though it kind of sucks. I feel like you should have the no, three. No, you got to have that on there. Yep. Yeah, you got to have all three. Yeah, man. Who knows this, this would become a series, Steve, with Capcom beat em up collection, then Capcom fighting collection, and now this, they're all using that same like insignia with the arrow, yeah. right? And they all have the same menu. Who who knew, right? I, I'm glad it's happened this way, though. No, I'm, I'm happy to see it, believe me. All right, Steve, I need to shut the fuck up for a while. So please talk about Super Mario Party and how your sister is going to love it. 
Yeah, speaking of things, you know, maybe not everyone's looking forward to Super Mario Party Jamboree. It's going to be at our house. It, me and my sister exhausted what Super Mario Party does, so it's time for a new one. There's two legacy boards, but neither one are from four, so I'm never hearing the end of this. <laughs> four is the one she likes? Yes, four is her too. Oh, four oh is the God. one I like too. Really? Okay, see, I like three. Yeah. Two, two is really good too. Oh, wait, the one that appeared in this direct is the Western Land from 2, right? Yes. Okay, so 2 is the one I like then. 2 is the one I like. As as I've mentioned, I was deprived of a Nintendo 64 as a child. So yeah, you've mentioned I'm, that once I'm or twice. biased. Yeah, once or twice on the show you have. Um, yeah, this looks good. Look, I haven't played a Mario Party in forever. I haven't really had anyone to play them with. Womp womp. But, like, I don't know. This looks like a lot of fun. There's They've really amp this shit up i love that during this era of like super mario party being so popular that like they've really stepped it up each time i think what was the first one for switch i forget what it was called point super being, mario party was super. it super mario party okay yeah. yeah and like that just sold so many millions of copies in a way that mario party never had before i think they were probably caught off guard it's like okay how do we like escalate this super mario party jamboree sure looks like it so good on them. This looks this looks great. Probably not for me, but looks great. All right. Let's get to it. Actually, okay. Let's let's go through this next one a little bit more piece by piece because I want to know what your reactions were as you were watching it. So, when the hooded figure showed up, did you know right away that that was like Link's Awakening 2019 art style? Cuz I didn't necessarily think that. It looked very similar to it, so I was uh, yeah, thinking, I, having an uh, inkling, linkling, I guess, that that was, was going to be under that hood, yeah. Did you have a linkling <laughs> about this, Kevin? Yeah, I don't think it took too long for me to figure it out. I didn't need a, a grand reveal, necessarily. Okay, I think well, just I, because it's, it's fairly got, it got a fairly like distinct, you know, uh, shiny look to it. Okay, well, I guess I'm stupid because I I needed the <laughs> I needed the the thing pulled off. I th- I was thinking it was some sort of like weird toy game, and it's like, oh wait, that that shit looks like toys. Okay, so before it was revealed, when did you realize it was a Zelda game? Would you when did you realize we were going to play the Legend of Link? When Link go down the hole. <laughs> Guess I'll die. <laughs> it, yeah, it took it took me more than going down the hole. I needed to see, you, you know, once they made it clear that we were th- this is actually Zelda led. That wasn't as immediately obvious. It's weird because it feels like people have been calling for this forever, and it's finally happening. A game where you play as Zelda, and what is it called? Echoes of Wisdom. It's going to take me a while to remember that one. I don't know why Breath of the Wild. I kept wanting to say Breath of the Wind. I, 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 it took me like three months to stop saying Breath of the Wind. I don't, <laughs> I don't know that's, why. That's funny. It had it, it, Tears of the Kingdom took a while to stick for me. <laughs> I think once, the... once I made the correlation of the queen dying, then I really was like, okay, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I can remember that shit now. <laughs> yeah. Um. This is perfect. I think, guys. I'll. I guess I'll throw it to Steve. I think this is perfect after the most grandiose. Zelda game any of us have ever played it's good to rein it back a little and do something like this yeah honestly I wasn't expecting another new Zelda game before Switch 2 came out let alone a year late after Breath of, uh, Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom just came <laughs> Breath out Breath of the Wind <laughs> Breath of the Wind <laughs> <laughs> but we're switching to Zelda and we're uh, Interacting with the Trirod or Wand of Gamelon, as some people have taken to calling it. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> yeah, oh, Lord. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, th- I think it's making the items, co- copies of items, and using that to do things is honestly what you would need, at least our first Zelda-led game to do. Because if you just said, here's Zelda and here's her sword and shield, like... Th- that would just be the same. What what they're going for here, I, I think, is the right step. But because I me, I don't know, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll, I'll complain later. <laughs> no, complain now. I want to hear the complain now. Oh, it's not a real complaint. I'm I'm just. They didn't announce a chibi storybook hooded Zelda amiibo to go with my Link's Awakening one. 
Yep, you're I, there, right. There's I, time. That, I didn't there's want time. To hear that. You go on the you were, store. You go you on the store right. page. <laughs> it's got amiibo compatibility. They got time, but. Uh, <laughs> Okay, great. Um, well, they would have shown it here if that existed. They love to show Amiibo and Nintendo Directs because that's the only fucking people who buy them. So, but um, I think you're correct about the items and stuff like that because, like, oh, well, Al Numa said it himself. He's like, well, is Link or is Zelda going to have a sword? Well, no, she's going to do this. I, I think that is correct, Kevin. Like, if it was just the same thing, but Zelda, I don't think that would be very exciting. Yeah, for, for sure. The The funny thing is, if I had made one prediction about what I thought we were going to see this direct beforehand, I've really thought that the Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons remakes were coming in this style. And to be honest, if I would have found out we were getting anything in the style that wasn't that, I would have said I would sn- snuff my nose at it. But honestly, now that we've seen this, um, I am glad we're getting it. I think it looks fucking awesome. The The duplication mechanic looks like it's it's pretty well thought out and implemented well. Um, and just in, in general, I like, um, you, you know, it, it just seems like the game has a like semi lighthearted um, and just good vibe to it. Yeah. Um, the one thing I was maybe a little and, and obviously I, it's, it's too early to tell early on in the trailer. Um, they did a fairly like large sweeping scene of the world and it i i hope that the world isn't like the, the different settings that we see aren't too restricted like to to work with the du- like the item duplication mechanic i hope that there's um you know some some variance and nuance to the different areas we can go to but i'm i'm not i'm not concerned about that necessarily but it did raise the question looking at the world cuz it was very like you know, looked pretty, um, pretty flat with a lot of the same trees in that scene. Yeah, but like the narrator said over the gameplay footage, he was like, no two people will solve something the same way or something like that. Do you remember that line? Oh, he was saying yes. something like that. So, yeah, and, and definitely they even showed with with the scene where she's like going through like the, the wind shooting out of the side of the mountain or whatever. So I think there's a lot of different ways to use those items. I hope it's just not like, you know, here's the world. This is the forest area. This is the plains area. And this is like, you know, the mountainy rock desert desert area and that's what it is i hope there's a little bit more uh a little bit more nuance to the setting itself i'm not sure that there will be but is that like a deal breaker for you would that be like disappointing actually you're just kind of like i would want to see something similar to the setting of Link's awakening i suppose Right. And, and, and not maybe not like in terms of like biomes, it's different, but they, they're really, you know, they, they've it's very much got its own distinct area. I don't want like a huge, you know, forest area that all looks the same and just has like different ways kind of shoehorned in to like experiment with the item duplication, I guess. Again, okay. I, I'm not it's, it's not a crit- criticism. I just just hope that doesn't become an issue with the game based on that one scene where they kind of showed the world off. I just think they showed that just because it looks good for a for a trailer, I think. Personally. Yeah, I, I, I hope so. No one knew about this until we saw it. So I think there's a lot of things we don't know about this game. I, I think it'll be just fine. And it's coming out in September. God damn it. Holy shit, Nintendo. My God. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> like, oh, and so right after this, they started the next thing on the docket with... <laughs> Have you ever wanted to live as a hobbit? And I was like, uh, no, <laughs> not really. <laughs> it never really, never really crossed my mind. But now there's a game where you can do that, Kevin. You're the, you're the Lord yeah, of the well, Rings you know guy. What? God so you... damn it. I have wanted to live as a hobbit. You know, <laughs> well, then you years. tell us, yeah, you tell I'm, us how much I'm you're going to buy in this game. I'm definitely the guy that talks about Lord of the Rings games the most on this show, for sure. Um, And we seen this a while ago. I was just like, whatever. I don't give a shit. This looks stupid. But the more I see it, I I fucking hate it because I feel like it's very transparent that there is zero effort into caring at all about the franchise that they're basing this off of. It's like solely trying to capitalize the Shire being whimsical and and trying to give us um, what was the what was the fucking animal crossing ripoff game that we used Hoko to life. Hoko Hoko life. life. Yeah. This is Hoko life in the fucking Shire. Um, <laughs> I, 
I, I, it pisses me off because we are, as we know, Lord of the Rings does not have the best track record with video games, period. So now we've got Middle Earth Enterprises and Friends, if we remember, and this ain't <laughs> it, so they can eat a dick. I hope this, I hope this fails miserably and, um, uh, they, they fucking have that license uh, pried out of Embracer Group's fucking heartless, cold, dead hands. <laughs> Eat a dick and friends, Steve. <laughs> well, Eat a dick and friends, absolutely. Well, Kevin, the mobile version, which, let's be real, that's the version they developed first, because look, look at it. it. It is going to be included with Netflix subscriptions, day and day with other versions, <laughs> so there's no real reason for anyone to buy this. No, I am not going to download this one to try, as much of a Netflix game whore I am. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you are you can say that, but I feel like you just might. <laughs> anyway... No. I don't know. Yeah, you might you might run out of betting money again here, Steve, and you'll be spending some time in the Shire. Yeah, you have to spend thirty hours in the Shire <laughs> to get some more money. <laughs> just just leave it. Just leave my phone on all night. Yeah, that's eight hours done already. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh no, I better see some fucking Hobbit beds. I better see some like you better have like Second two wives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You better you better build that shit. You better build that shit. We're gonna be judging your town as you. You better give us daily screenshot updates. <laughs> um steve as capcom people we were eating good this direct because right after that they showed ace attorney investigations collection dog we've been asking for this forever i've been holding off on playing the first miles edgeworth game i've been going through the phoenix Wright games on ipad because i think it's like the best way to play them these days miles edgeworth is on there and i've been waiting because i knew they were gonna do this because for those who don't know there's a miles edgeworth 2 that is famously never came out here and here it is now both of them are going to be in this collection We've been waiting for this day forever. It's here. Yeah, I know you never played the first one, but you're more familiar with the mobile ports than I am. Did they redo the uh, first Ace Attorney Investigations game like they did here? Because they showed off the whole, well, we have a new art style and you can toggle back between the two at any time. I don't think it has that. I think it just has the new art style. I don't think you can like switch between them. So this isn't a completely new style. They, they, they've they had this for a while on mobile. See, while, I don't but. know. See, I would have to look and compare. Okay. I, I'm guessing, though, that it is that style from mobile because it looks like the same style from, like, the trilogy and, like, the second trilogy. It looks like the exact same thing to me. So I'm guessing that's where they got it from. Because since you have to actually move characters around a screen, well, I say characters, you're moving Edgeworth around a screen, really. I, I think that the... Uh, improved graphical style actually means a lot more here yeah for sure versus like the other games where it's just like they're prettying it up but it's like the exact one-to-one animations which this might be too and that's fine but you know yeah i'm shit do they listen to us or what holy fuck someone's listening to us (laughs) um then they showed romancing saga 2 a remake of romancing saga 2 i should say and I played the Switch port of the original Romancing Saga 2 whenever it came out, like 2018, I think. And while it had some warts, that was a really fun game, really unique, fun RPG of its time. I get why it was a thing. Do not play Romancing Saga 3. I think that game is terrible. That's another story for another day. But Romancing Saga 2, yes. So, Steve, to me, this just looked like the Trials of Mana engine or whatever, but like Romancing Saga 2 and doing turn-based battles in the same kind of way again have have you played these are these on even on your docket or oh they're on my docket i've had a romancing saga 2 the same port you had in particular sitting there for ever since i got for a 10 or so dollars on a holiday sale and like i'll play it a little later and you know (laughs) time makes fool of us all and now i'm gonna have to actually do that but you know (laughs) I, I mean, one day th- th- these sagas are going to get the attention they deserve. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're, now, saga- we're now finding out you have a docket and a pile, which is a little bit concerning. <laughs> <laughs> well, the docket is the digital version of the pile. Oh, oh clever. 
I, see I, like I think you've I think you've told us the pile is partially digital before, so I don't know what to believe oh, from you anymore. But anyways, potato, potato. <laughs> he's he's hand waving. There's your, too many uh, games to play. <laughs> w- w- wolves grow on plants now. Okay, nothing yeah. nothing matters anymore. Have you looked outside? <laughs> Have you looked outside? Touch some wolf grass. <laughs> 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 oh my god yeah. all right let's get to the finale and everyone knows what it is but before we get there i want to say this there was someone who mentioned i guess they were live tweeting the direct and after they showed echoes of wisdom he was like there's no way metroid prime 4 isn't the closer because otherwise zelda would be the closer what is the closer and you know what? That's logical thinking. But considering I was so shell shocked by what was happening as direct, I yeah. didn't really think that. And he's right because the closer was our first look at gameplay of Metroid Prime Four. And Jesus Christ, guys! Um, I, I guess I'll just start. This game will probably not be appreciated as a last hurrah for a system the way it should because Switch was underpowered to begin with. But I legitimately thought these graphics looked insane. If I didn't know any better and you told me this was a PS4 game, I would believe you. This game looked crazy. Now, do you think that that was running on Switch, though? Because I yes. know they said there will be no hmm. mention of Switch successor. I Man, it, I, I, it's I hard do. to say, but I felt like that looked too good to be running on Switch. I think that was 100 running 100% running on Switch. If that were not, it would be a much higher resolution. That would be that would have been like 1440p or something at least. At that res, yes, I do think it's running on Switch. And it wasn't running perfectly. There were some dips. Right? But again, this is like who I mean, it's coming out next year, right? So who knows? But I thought that was one of the most impressive things I've seen someone do on a piece of hardware in years. That was crazy. Like, okay, well, Steve, do you? you that was switch footage, right? You do, you do not believe that was switch. Yeah, two? I think that was. I think that was switch footage. Unlike the the one right before, where I think you you could make the argument. I think you showed me switch footage, switch two footage on Romancing Saga two. Oh yeah, yeah. So Romancing Saga through that was running way too silky and way too like sharp. To be, so I think that was like Steam footage or something like that. That that shit looked like way too good, considering you, how Trials of Mana looks on on Switch. I don't think so. You, you could tell me that was Switch Two footage. This, I will believe, is still uh, Switch footage, if only because they need to come out and show us what it looks like on Switch Two for comparison's sake. No, not that this trailer is bad. I mean, some people complained about it being mostly action oriented, and then showing us the you know, what we're exploring at the end, but like you need to do it that way because we like the explorey parts, but if you're going to draw other people in, you need, you need the shooty mm-hmm. bang bang. Why do people complain about the way trailers are cut nowadays as if they don't know the purpose of a fucking trailer? Why are people doing this? Did we talked about this? I think last big deal about silent Hill too. Yeah. Where it's like, cause of the state of play where it's like, Oh, they showed a bunch of action and it had rock music. Dog. Well, Silent Hill 2 has rock music. Plus, yeah, they need to show the cool parts and not the boring parts where you just look at a bunch of keys. Not that that's boring, but that's boring uh, for a trailer. <laughs> anyway. And they, show, and they showed the scan <laughs> visors back. That's incredibly important for me to know right off the bat. Yeah, they showed that. They showed that for a reason, Kevin. Well, I, I need to take a step back now just to, because I am going when we get to Summer Game Fest, I, I do. F- I think when we talk about how these trailers are presented, Nintendo has this down to an art. I do think there, there's 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 just too much cinematic for like Summer Game Fest for sure. I don't mm-hmm. know. I, I do have a problem with the way trailers are um, commonly done, but it's it's not a not a problem that affects the directs, luckily. No, Nintendo has a different um well I think I think it would have sucked if they would have come out here and just showed like a CG Samus looking towards the sky and then it said 2025. Mm-hmm. I think I think they knew that they could not show Metroid Prime 4 for the first time without gameplay. Yeah, for for sure. And I think for you know for for something that's way far off to just see a glimpse of it, that's fine. But for something that is, you know, coming out within the next year, um, I, I would like to at least get a sense of how something is going to play. So, you know, the the direct does that, and of course the Metroid um Prime 4 trailer did that really well. 
Um, yeah, I, I also, I, I have to ask, do you guys think that this is coming both to switch and the switch successor? Because I, I think that's definitely happening. I feel like this is a uh, breath of the wild and this comes out the day that the switch successor comes out and comes out on switch and switch Two. I do not believe it anymore. I did for a long time. Now that they showed this right now, I don't believe it anymore. You think it'll just be a Switch game? Yes, because I feel like I don't think this is a Breath of the Wild situation in which like, yeah, they hadn't shown the successor yet. NX, whatever. I guess we knew that it existed. But I do think that like if this was going to come out on Switch 2, they would have waited until 2025. They wouldn't have shown it to us right now. That's my personal feeling. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong, and I hope I'm wrong, because if it looks like this right now, holy fuck. (laughs) Right? So we'll see. I hope I'm wrong, but I do not think this will be a Switch 2 game. Now I think this is just a Switch game. I I do, but I guess we'll 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 wait and see. Um, I also I have in the comments and I just need to get through this. um, I have written out it made my nipples hard. And I don't say that just jokingly because I (laughs) genuinely when this was on, I did realize my nipples were hard. (laughs) Hey, I just want to let you know. It's a very sexy lady doing sexy uh, bounty hunter things on (laughs) on a planet far, far away from home. I do like that, like within like three seconds of the trailer, they showed like the lock on and strafe. I was like, oh, boy, that's the 2000s right there, because, uh, you know, you never <laughs> know how they might like try to trick these things up. And they just showed right away. No, this is Metroid Prime still, which, you know, take it or leave it. Right. But that's that's what it is. Yeah, even even the the scene, the morph ball, it looks it just like looked so much like it moves like you would expect it to in prime. Right. Just kind of the way that, you know, the morph ball jostled as she was going through the, mm-hmm. you know, through the little mm-hmm. tunnel thing there. At a, oh, it was so silky smooth too. everything was just look good. Was that volumetric fog behind the space pirates? When she like or if it wasn't, that was like a very convincing effect. If that was like billboarded or something that looked crazy. I've never (laughs) seen a switch game do that at 60 fucking frames a second on this sweet earth. Oh, my God. Or any frames a second, really, because why would you try that on switch? But Retro Studios is trying it. Good Lord. Yeah, Yeah, I was so everything looked incredible. The the textures like overall. Yeah, like, damn. Mm. Just really great stuff. I'm out of Steve. You got anything left? I'm uh, I'm spent. Might have to go take a shower after this. Yeah, yeah that might be a good idea. <laughs> might be sh- might be shower time. All right, guys, let's celebrate the best direct of all time with a nice hot shower. Be right back. Let me tighten your nuts. We're back. I'm drying off. Uh, Kevin, can you hand me my towel? Yeah, of course I can. I think I think that was a more soulful shower than we usually have, and I think we bonded. A lot of eye contact this time. Absolutely, Steve. It was nice. It depends on what you guys mean by eye contact. Maybe he just tries to act macho at the end, and he does where he like circles the towel and then tries and whips us on our bare bottoms so yeah. he can try and like demonstrate masculinity after. But he has a soft I, side. I yep. can't get a loofah. We never 
do an appropriate. We don't have an appropriate size shower. It's anarchy. We we we're doing a <laughs> podcast of anarchy over here. <laughs> I, mean, I think the 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 shower size is by design, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> so we can be yeah. This ain't a, this ain't a locker room. We need a shower shower. Anyway, <laughs> um, we want to recap Summer Games Fest because I keep saying games. I know it's singular game. The Summer Game Fest games because there was a lot. And I guess we can just start here. Uh, what did you guys think overall of like the whole weekend? Not just like the actual Summer Games Fest thing. Because I thought it was obviously not as good as like the last couple years. But like there was some there was a lot of interesting stuff, I think. I don't think it was like as dire as people made it out to be. The whole thing was functional. I'm not going to be the asshole that says there is nothing I wanted to play at this thing, so it was terrible. That's yeah. what I, that's what everyone says about every presentation. Yeah, I know, but the Summer Game Fest in particular. If Jeff's going to position this thing as the new E3, he's got to hit a bit harder than he did this particular year. And, and and I know at the end anyway, and I know he knows this because last year he showed up with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and this year he showed up with this other thing that no one cared about. Uh, I think people care about Phantom Blade Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Did they? Because I feel like <laughs> I'm pretty sure they do, Kevin. I'm gonna, uh, as far as the presentation, I'm gonna be a little bit harsher, and and I won't be over dramatic and say there was nothing, um, but there, there for me, the, um, there wasn't enough to keep it real engaging um uh, you know and i think the things that were interesting kind of suffered as a result because there just wasn't a good cadence to that presentation um and it it, it felt like a slog i i did definitely found myself like picking up my phone and just trying to like you know keep a second eye out for you know when something comes up that wasn't uh, you know it, it felt grating I, I wasn't i wasn't is not an a plus for me no it wasn't it wasn't super great but that's you know you're only beholden to the games that are actually coming out right so it's not like he can you know pull something out of thin air i mean yeah he can have an announcement like oh so elder scroll 7 is happening well it's like well no shit right but i don't know yeah no and and, and i totally get that but i guess as you know a consumer of these presentations um you know if okay i'll put it this way if we didn't have a show to do then I would have much preferred to just go and watch the individual trailers that I was interested in out of a list on YouTube after. And that's, you know, that doesn't feel great to say, but it's the truth. Uh, I don't blame you, but like, that's why we need real in-person events. That's why this isn't E3, but I won't go into that because that's a whole thing. But yeah, so I thought it was interesting that he even, that Jeff even started off the entire thing by addressing the layoffs in the industry. I really didn't think he'd come out there and say that. Not that I think he deserves some big praise for saying the obvious, but like I just thought we'd just kind of gloss over it, Steve. I feel like we kind of glossed over it anyway because the weekend wrapped up and Sumo Digital decided to announce their set of layoffs right after a whole bunch of celebrating reveals they had over the weekend. I mean, uh, come on. (laughs) I know. Well, they they kicked it off strong, I guess. Strong for not for me. I don't care about the Lego games, but Lego Horizon Adventures actually did look kind of kind of cute. Aloy doing the you know I don't know. I think I kind of gave up on Lego games when they started talking. That's when I was out. I was like when they actually started to have voices instead of like pantomiming like scenes from the movie or show or whatever that they're doing. I thought that was a lot funnier when they actually started talking. I was like, nah, no thanks. But, you know, I don't know. This looks good for people who like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of with you. I've I've tried Lego games multiple times. I can't get into them. You know, I'm glad they're there for the people that do like them. But I do think this is a cool idea. And I also I, I appreciate that Sony let them do this with one of their premium IPs. I think it's, it's cool that it exists. I think so. I talked about Lego games before. The one I liked was Lego City because it wasn't attached to a licensed property. Probably helped a lot. This being a video game and we're making a Lego video game out of the video game, it'll probably help it with me. I'll get this for PS5, but guys, there's a Switch version coming. I got to get the game card to stick next to Pentiment, right? What? <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> um, will, will you be getting Harry Potter Quidditch Champions with graphics on PlayStation 5? Well, it's day one with Royale with cheese, so I think that means I have to at least try. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I rented this on game well the I, well quidditch world cup on gamecube a whole bunch back in the day so I, I think it merits like you know a few games before i'm like oh no they didn't get this right at all before i delete it well, or maybe it's good we'll find out <laughs> uh, kevin i was not really that impressed by star wars outlaws and it seems like the outlets were not impressed either so what's your you know, take on they, this <laughs> You know what? I actually I I really liked the trailer for this. I've been moderately interested in this. Um, and, but yeah, I was I was pretty bummed. I I seen a headline after the show uh, talking about demos being unfavorably compared to Uncharted: Golden Abyss, which is not good news. <laughs> um, but I'm uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm interested to like see where the reviews for this actually land. I I don't. It's it's probably not going to be a day one purchase unless it sounds like it's really good. But I'm yeah I. I got hopes for it. I I'm just kind of interested because obviously I love the division and it's made by the division guys. So like I'm just kind of interested in it on the surface, but like I don't know, not really, not really feeling it. Especially after you're comparing it to like a you know the top tier Vita game from <laughs> 2012, I guess. But I don't know, Steve. unfavorably, nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they had a brief trailer for Neva made by the grease people i played i liked grease when i finally played it and i'm sure i'll like this one i finally play it too g-r-i-s right grease grease yes yeah um i've only seen that game around that that game looks super fucking french i don't know if it's made by french people but it looks french as fuck it feels french as fuck if that makes any sense <laughs> yeah it, you know you know what i'm talking about it feels uh quite french um uh, I don't really have a whole lot to say about Civilization 7, except that I love that they dragged out Sid Meier for a video message after the trailer. Is that it just because he's like, he was just like, bitch, I'm Sid Meier. I'm not going all the way to L.A. for this, <laughs> this fucking thing. I'm surprised he wasn't puffing a cigar in that in that video. Look, his name is on the box. He still still he could do whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> he really can. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, Civ 6. I Steve, one Christmas a long time ago, got me a Switch copy. That's a fun little game. I'm not the biggest strategy guy, as everyone knows, but like even I can get into Civ, Kevin. Yeah, I've I've dabbled in Civ Six periodically throughout the last few years, and and I like it. Um, I've never felt like I've like truly understood the mechanics to their core. So I would love to get into what like, you know maybe maybe Civ Seven is the one to get into it from launch and like really learn it well because I think it would be it would be really satisfying to do. Mm -hmm. These games are dangerous though. Yeah, it could very realistically be what I've been playing for however many shows after I start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Civ, Civ is dangerous. <laughs> they, we actually have a release date for black myth. Wukong. We've been seeing this game forever, literally years. And I remember the first trailer for it ever. was like, that's not real graphics. There's no way graphics can look like that, but that was years ago. But now we have graphics on PlayStation five and we have uh, very, very high powered graphics cards that have come out since. And it's like, yeah, now games can actually look like that. It's supposed to be coming out August 20th. I'll believe it when I see it, <laughs> but um, yeah, man, I, I don't know. Just on a pure graphical level, I'm kind of interested in giving it a poke. This isn't for me, but I'm sure this will be for somebody. It, it's it's this funny thing. It's not on Xbox. Did they just keep shoving the disc in and it just kept saying no way? Like, what, what, what happened there? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they said they delayed the Xbox version for an indefinite amount of time. I was like, uh oh, that means Series S. That's what that shit means. <laughs> because I don't I don't know why else they would say that. We know that's what that means. Uh, like, what else would that mean? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Metaphor Refantasio, the new Atlas RPG, looked fantastic. It's coming out on October. I think this game, Steve, has the chance to be really, really special. Atlas has been on fire lately. And I th it just looks like one of those games where they're taking all the accumulated knowledge of their previous shit and just making something that looks so super refined. I was very impressed by this, and I, I cannot wait. See, I might be able to wait, because even though you're absolutely right, this looks fantastic. It's all the anime cheese that's right up my alley. But Shin Megami Tensei Five Vengeance just came out, and I can't help but sit here and wonder if it's not a bit wiser to just hold off for the inevitable metaphor re-re-Fantasio that'll come out like in another year or so. 
So you're, you're, you're just going to wait till like 2028 or whatever. You're going to wait till PS6 to play Metaphor. Or 2026, because I feel like that's the amount of time these things fly out. How about shut up so they, <laughs> they have a um they showed street fighter 6 season 2 um they showed m bison and elena those are street fighter characters but then they also announced terry bogard and my shirunai those are not street fighter characters they those are, are fatal fury <laughs> characters bitch oops what happened yo is this like capcom versus snk3 in the flesh on our Street Fighter 6, something they have never done before. They have never had guest characters in Street Fighter. So this is insane. Yeah, I've been putting off buying Street Fighter 6 because you might recall I had to buy, I had to pick between this and Final Fantasy 16 last year, listen to our show about how that went. But uh, th- this buying this finally went up the priority list. I, I, I begged earlier in the show for Capcom versus SNK, more of that. So, you know. Yes, so I'll, I'll I'll hop right on this soon ish. Soon ish. How about right now? I think M Bison comes Is it out on the about... docketer in the pile. Yes, yeah, a docketer pile somewhere. <laughs> Docket or pile? PlayStation Five. <laughs> oh my fucking god! You are. <laughs> I would kick you off the show, but I need you so we can talk about Fatal Fury in a second. But first, <laughs> I want I want to mention Dragon Ball Z Sparking Zero. You guys may remember the very first episode of Fine Time. Our very first big question was me coming on here and begging you guys to talk me out of being excited for Sonic Frontiers because Sonic had hurt me so much. Here I am right now with Sparking Zero. This game is going to suck ass. I know it. Look at it. <laughs> but it looks so fucking good. Look at these. Look at this shit. It looks incredible. And I know it's going to piss me off. Please help me not spend my 70 US dollars on this and piss myself off. <laughs> Andre, remember the joke segment you did a few months ago where you kept reading all the Gokus and Vegetas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that should be enough to keep you away from this. But that's the shit I like. <laughs> that's what I want. Then just wait a few months when it's twenty dollars. <laughs> I know it's a Bandai Namco game. I should I should probably know better by now. All right, let's talk about Fatal Fury: City of the Wolves because there hasn't been a Fatal Fury since what? Probably one of those like three D ones on PS two. Maybe like that was like twenty years ago. Are we counting those? <laughs> yeah, sure. Those aren't bad. I'm not trying to dunk. I know people like to dunk on anything back then that was like, uh, you know, something going 3D. Now, I think those are actually not bad. I, I never had the privilege, but yeah, they're they're not. I'm, I'm not saying go out and emulate them or excuse me, archive them. Yo, City of the Wolves looks amazing, Steve. Holy shit. I want this to be so fucking good on the other side. Please it's gonna be, be good. fucking good. Please it's going to be good. good. You can look, look, look at like some extended gameplay footage you can tell sometimes so with fighting games you can look at and tell it's one of those genres where it's like that you can tell if it's going to be jank like this looks amazing art style incredible um they showed something called mighty Morphin power rangers rita's rewind and i don't know dick about power rangers i only learned who rita repulsa was like three years ago um so like uh, steve you take this away from me i yeah (laughs) digital eclipse is making this one and it feels like they had one after making uh the cowabunga collection they said let's do it for power rangers and then they had a brief look at the sheer hell it would be to uh licensing all of these games from america and japan from all these different publishers and developers and said fuck it we're gonna make our own and I'm a long last Power Ranger fan, but I'll get this on a sale probably. <laughs> Looks fun enough. Yeah, why on a sale? Like you're not like waiting. Oh, to, I don't like, know. I this? don't know when it's coming out. I always feel like everything comes out at once, and then I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to be September and October. Now you could dictate it by that direct. Holy shit! They showed a game called Deer and Boy, and like, look, I'm. Sorry, whoever made this, but that has to be one of the worst names I've heard in a long time. It's not quite guacamelee bad, but Deer and Boy, 
is pretty fucking bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't think Guacamole is a bad name. I, I I don't know what what do you have against Guacamole? This is not the first time this has come. It's up. like the wor- It's like the worst pun of all time. Guacamole. It's- it's terrible. Fine. Andre, I, I agree that Deer and Boy, the name should have been Workshop some, but Guacamele is a fine ga- name for the game that it is. And it's a fine game. Don't get me wrong. I like Guacamele. I never played the second one. But, you know, Jesus Christ. I don't know. Deer and Boy, not really doing it for me. Um, Slitherhead <laughs> absolutely did it for me. That shit looked mm-hmm. wild. Um, the combat looked weirdly stiff, but I was like kind of into it. It looked kind of PS2 y, like in a good way. It looked kind of like original Xbox y. I don't know why I'm kind of, you know, you guys know I like that like old 3D jank sometimes, and I don't think that's always a bad thing. This game kind of had that. And I hope it's level based, though, and not some open world game, because I don't want to, like, have to possess like people like across like this whole map. And it's like this whole interconnected. Nah, just give me a level and I could like play it. Hey, you guys remember Geist? Just kidding. No one remembers Geist. (laughs) Besides me and maybe Andre. But, uh, you know, this this looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I honestly, Andre, I didn't think too much of the stiff movements because I figured you're possessing things and. You're not completely familiar with it. It's going to be awkward. No, that that, that was the vibe I got. I I guess. I mean, I, it just it just looked really stiff, like in a in a way that people might think and go, that doesn't look very good. But for me, it was appealing. Um, I like that Killer Bean game they showed. I thought that was James Pond at first when he got in the car. I thought, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it was just me. But um, the fact that it's a roguelike has me pretty interested. Like maybe it's like a GTA type of game where you try to like survive as long as you can by like keep more and more people chasing you. It's kind of looked like what was happening, but it looked it looked fun. This looks too stupid to not eventually try. Like when it invariably comes up with uh, our Royale with cheese for the month. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll play it on that. I I just want to say, despite Andre's poor takes about Mario and Luigi, I appreciate the fact that we podcast with someone who would immediately think about James Pond when seeing uh, <laughs> just seeing the <laughs> trailer. See, see I, I, think got, that, I think that's Euro nice. trash. <laughs> I, lo- I, I got the sauce. See, I'm not all bad. I'm not all bad takes. I know about James Pond. Um, <laughs> how many how many people seen Killer Bean and James Pond was what entered their head? Not that many. Uh, may- maybe just me, right? Right? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think Steve thought about James Pond. I think it was not just... until I saw it in the notes. No. <laughs> OK, but you see what I'm talking about. Yes, though, right? I did like... after the fact. Yeah. <laughs> um, they showed something called Wander Stop, which looked like a cozy little farming game at first. And then, like, she started having a panic attack or something at the end. That took a turn. You, got, you guys said this was the wholesome direct, right? I, I got to call my sponsor if this isn't, though, because <laughs> that was. <laughs> We took a wrong turn somewhere. <laughs> that was wholesome direct as fuck. Yeah, I, have, I haven't really seen one of those. I love that the Among Us devs came out on stage to present like a sizzle reel of indie games that they're funding with the money that they made from Among Us. That is so fucking cool. Honestly, that is that is yeah. that's amazing. You know, they could just sit on that money forever because they have one of the biggest indie hits mm. in years and and they're mm. not doing that. That is that I honestly think that's like fantastic. Uh, Believe it or not, I don't really have a whole fuck of a lot to say about Sonic X Shadow Generations. I'm not a big fan of Sonic Generations, so I'm not really looking forward to this. I'll get it maybe if it's a good redo and it's cheap sometime, but like I'm not really looking forward to this one, Steve. We already saw this on State of Play, and I just I just thought it was funny how 2005 it got on the internet after we saw more Shadow on on the video. Also, the P- the PS5 version is getting an extra cutscene. Like, like that's the incentive to getting the PS5 version. Of course, if you could, that's the version you get. But that's the exclusive get a cutscene. Like, of all the things to keep console <laughs> exclusive, it's going to be the thing you you could watch on YouTube as soon as the first person finds it. I, look, someone's gonna. That's a selling point, though. Someone people will do that. Look, I'm getting it on PS5 anyway. But like, if I were to get it, but. A yeah, cutscene. Exclusive cutscene. Boy, I can't wait. Nobody else can see this cutscene. If you do not have a PlayStation 5, you may not watch that video online or on Twitter. No, sir. You may not. I sincerely hope uh, they got paid. <laughs> they probably did. <laughs> Speaking of things getting paid. Kevin, 
Tell us about that Power yeah, World I, Island. I, I, I have nothing to say about Power World Island. I just wanted to take a moment of your time to verbally say we are your pals of the island, and then we can move along. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank um, you for having me. The, the, the best uh, show name in, in show history so far. We are your pals of the world. Um, <laughs> Valorant is coming to consoles, and since I'm the sh- hero shooter guy, I guess I'll just talk about this a little bit. I have never been interested in Valorant artistically i think it looks like wallpaper that's how boring that game has always looked to me and i hesitate to even call it an art style it is like anti-art style it has no style at all it just looks utilitarian it just looks like here is a game and you shoot and here is power like i i am not sinking time and money into something that looks like this so in case you saw valorant guys and you thought maybe oh that's right up dre's alley it is not and I wanted to cap off the Summer Games Fest that there was two games that we skipped over called, well, we didn't skip over Phantom Blade Zero. Steve uh, decided nobody is interested in it for some reason. But there was also there was that that closed the show and Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess, this Capcom game. The reason why I'm mentioning these two games together is that I wasn't really interested in them from the way they were shown off at the show. But once I looked at like some direct feed footage and looked at those games closer of like actual like real gameplay for a while, they became a lot more interesting to me. So like now I'm actually looking forward to both of them. So maybe Kevin's on to something like maybe just showing some gameplay sometimes of like it doesn't have to be a whole lot of it, but like. That's that can be what can get people interested in. I'm not going to go as far as him and say, oh, I don't like all the the way trailers are cut necessarily because I don't really feel that way. But yeah, Kevin, maybe you're right. Maybe a little more gameplay goes a long way, because like I said, from the way they were shown at the show, I wasn't interested. It it took the gameplay to get me there. You're posting with Fine Time. All right, guys, it's mostly just me here because after uh, Summer Game Fest, I I always want to say games like everyone else, and the other shows, they had Day of Devs. You know, it's that other show that people don't want to watch because they are too busy going, oh, man, I wanted something different. And you would think then that this show where there were a bunch of different things, that that would be the show you watch for things you would want. Somehow still no. You, you got the Spelunky does making Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo Switch Online, the game, and UFO 50. I mean, it's a set of games for a system that never existed. How can you people at home say no? Speaking of folks at home, what about building relationships? You know, where you're literally a house that builds relationships with other houses and goes fishing sometimes. Or Zucosis, a survival horror game at the zoo. Did you people see this fucking giraffe lashing its neck around like a damn tentacle? Andre's given me a look, and it reminds me a bit of last show where he was all, just make everything playable on a phone. So Netflix came out and said, yeah, okay, we'll go do that. Where games like Arranger, previously on Nintendo's partner showcase, and Cozy Grove Camp Spirit being among those. I mean, I'd keep going on all this, but it's really tough to quantify why games like Psychroma, Tom the Post Girl, and Phoenix Springs piqued my interest without actually watching the videos. But as we all know, there's just no pleasing everyone all at once in today's climate. So to make Andre a little happy, I'll bring up that they ended by playing music from Cocoon. Uh, The game, not the movie. That would be silly. Diabetes. So real quick, Devolver always puts on a great show, Devolver Digital, and they sure did this time. They followed up on their Volvi thing from last (laughs) year, which was incredible with what? I guess basically this guy is going insane in his apartment. Uh, Is he just like a super Volvi fan or Volvi's heir? It was like very much just like a weird horror thing. And it was as they usually are, which was fantastic. 
I think he's just a Devolver fan overall because he's got all this weird merch show from over the years that's never existed. And it's probably freakier than whatever we have planned for Halloween. And they even made up an 80s, 90s cartoon show for Volvi. That's just fucking insane. <laughs> oh, I love the clip that they showed. I think it was after Cult of the Lamb, which we both got to get to sometime. Um, where, where the kid was like, I thought you were executed by the head of state. And Volvi was like, no, I was not. Now pass me that onion. I need a snack if we're going to. And then it just cuts to whatever. <laughs> it's like, what the hell was that? It was excellent. That was pretty peak. They, they showed the whole thing at the end and they, they were just walking down the street like, oh, man, I could go for a nice pineapple and ham pizza. Like, like, oh, no, I can't have pizza. Pizza gives me shit diarrhea. <laughs> shit diarrhea. That was like the way the child would say it if they their dad said they could cuss for the first time. I had some shit diarrhea. Uh, ten out of ten, no notes. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was great. Go watch that. Um, let's wrap this up with Xbox. I thought there was a number of interesting things in here, and I thought last year they had like the best presentation. I think we all agreed on that. Well, that's the problem. This isn't the first time where where they have a good presentation, and you know it it seems like something's going on. I, I well, yeah, yeah. I, well, I I thought the presentation last year was really good too, and um, I didn't pick up my Xbox controller a whole lot in the last three hundred and sixty five <laughs> days. They're very good at presentations, though. Okay, they're mm-hmm. very good. <laughs> <laughs> how how um. Look, I know I'm allowed to call it Call of Duty Black Cops 6. I don't know how, uh, how if you guys are afraid to say that or not, but I'm allowed to call it Black Cops 6. Look, look, every time I was scrolling through the notes for more Inside Baseball, I just kept seeing Blast Core 6, okay? <laughs> so that's that's where my mind went, and I'm just thinking of a more whimsical game industry because at least the first game is on there. I guess what I'm trying to say is this is not for me. I have been excited in, for Call of Duty in forever. And that's okay, especially since the next thing was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to talk about whimsical, I thought Doom the Dark Ages was whimsical as hell. That's like a very 2000s ass thing to do, I think, or even 90s. Like, that was just like, okay, let's just take Doom guy and make it, I don't know, give him a shield and a mace or something, whatever. Uh, Kevin, I thought this was fantastic. I mean, it had been rumored for a long time. I guess it kind of leaked, but like... Yeah, I I was super into this. I loved uh, Doom 2016. I thought Eternal was even better, and I'm looking forward to this. This this looked cool and fun. We've talked before about like you know not playing games out of principles of things, and I'm I'm really usually the last guy to ever do that. Um, but there was that story about um, Mick Gordon and to do maternal and that really stuck in my cross so to be honest it's not you know i'm not rejecting this game out of principle but i've got a pretty bad taste in my mouth after that so um i hate to i hate to be the debbie downer yeah no i i totally get that that's that's totally fair um one thing i thought was really funny is that immediately they didn't wait till the show was over immediately after this aired on the xbox showcase it was also announced for ps5 (laughs) <laughs> they didn't even fucking wait. It was, uh, it was, I just thought that was funny. It's like, you guys can't even wait till the shit's over. But yeah. Okay. I'm not a Dragon Age person, nor am I a Bioware person in general. I do not like Bioware games. They are not for me. But Dragon Age, the Veil Guard looked. What what the fuck was that? That was like that almost looked like an announcement for Dragon Age characters in Fortnite. It was so off putting. It's like mm-hmm. that doesn't seem like anything anybody who was into the series would want. And I from what I can tell, I'm right. Like, what was that art style, Kevin? That just like it looked like a hero shooter. Yeah. I can even outside of this, I feel like I'm just getting sick of seeing that art style in general, but it's certainly not, it doesn't feel appropriate for dragon age. Uh, yeah. It's, it's overused and uh, wrong, wrong audience. In my opinion, you know what it looked like for real? It looked like tiny Tina's wonderlands. Like <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that they were doing on purpose here. I don't know what this was. This didn't look like you just said, this didn't look like dragon age. No, I'm not the, I mean, inquisition. I know that was like 10 years ago, but like, come on guys. Anyway, I figured since like, I don't know, game of Thrones and like all this other medieval stuff that has been popular since I figured like they'd go that direction. Final fantasy 16. Mm-hmm. Right. But no, 
Guess not, Steve. Yeah, speaking of things that are kind of just there, Starfield's getting shared space DLC. Like, it's kind of just meant to fill space in on the calendar. Well, I think shortly after that, they showed Expedition 33, which I thought looked crazy good. It was the thing where it almost looked like, I don't know, they were literally like what it sounds like they were making some expedition out into this dark wilderness or whatever and it looked like a turn-based rpg but it was like definitely much more westernized like as if like i don't know i can't even think of a good example i guess maybe dragon age if that were like a like a japanese like (laughs) turn-based rpg Mm. that's what it kind of looked like that looked rad as hell that i don't know why were you guys not interested in that i i thought that looked really good Uh. And I think I'd need to see more. Okay. You know, if, I don't, yeah. It's okay. not a day one purchase anyway. Well, I, I'm into it. That looked good. What I am also very into is South of Midnight. Now, this is the thing we praised mm. a lot last year where we saw this like cutscene that had a very interesting like stop motion animation to it. And this girl in the swamp and talking to the guy playing the guitar, we thought that was that looked really good, but we didn't see any gameplay. This year we saw some gameplay. I thought it was weird, Kevin, that they still had that stop motion style in the cutscenes, and then it turns the gameplay sixty frames a second immediately. <laughs> like, yeah. It was yeah. weird, right? They kept going back and forth, but I didn't mind it. I thought this looked really good. I was just gonna say this feels like it's gonna get a PS5 version when they feel like they need to make another headline. Oh yeah, this is coming to PS6 in like 2028 or something like that for sure. Yeah, this I thought this was one of the biggest treats of the of the show. Like that art style is great, but that gameplay it looks so smooth and fluid. Um, you know, there was that scene where she was standing a ways away from that that like castle, like churchy castle or whatever, mm-hmm. and she just fucking zipped right up it, like right up the tower. It just looked like it felt really good to play. Um, and and just like the general motif is very eclectic and, and unique. So yeah, I'm I'm super looking forward to this. I think it looks awesome. Someone said that look, this looks like what Forspoken promised it would be, like to play like. Mm. And I and I do agree. It does look like yeah. that because the way because you know, Forspoken, she's like, you know, you have like you're running over the environment, you're doing this sort of parkour stuff. And she wasn't necessarily doing parkour in this thing, but it's like the like you said, the way she was like running up the wall, the way like the movement of it and the fluidity, it looks like it actually has that. Yeah, almost like you're you're kind of like chaining together that movement. Um, mm-hmm. you know, sunset overdrive almost might be a apt comparison here. I don't know if it'll be that mechanically dense with movement. I mean, I hope it is. I think that kind of stuff is fun. But yeah, this looks like until this comes to another system, it looks like I can just hope maybe the Steam Deck can like eke this out at like an acceptable Mm. frame rate, maybe. But um, until then, guys, I thought the Metal Gear Solid 3 remake looked like shit. That looked like so last gen. Like, and why is it running at 30? Like, no thanks. I don't uh, – do you th- – Steve, you're the Metal Gear Solid 3 liker. Did you think that looked good? I didn't. Oh, they're not committed to a date yet. Things can change. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let, me, let me honk that clown now. Winking, winking. There. Yeah, Off it's, getting, it's there. getting a big workout this time. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, Perfect Dark is real. <laughs> it's a real game, you guys. Mm, I guess. And it mm. looks oh fucking K. <laughs> it looked like Ass Creed. <laughs> it did look it like Ass Creed. <laughs> what it looked For, like. Like they 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 were talking about like the first quadruple A developer. It just like this looked so boring to me. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, just, I wasn't into it. Um, Fable looked like, I mean, okay, I don't know anything about Fable except what it looks like. And to mm. me, like, Kevin, that didn't look like Fable. Now, I get it. It's been a long time. If you're doing a reboot, it should look different. But that didn't look recognizably Fable to me at all. I I just I, I like Fable has been floating around for quite a while now, uh, you know, and I don't think anybody still knows what this is. We had that uh, like the giant trailer last year um, and whatever this was this year. I mean, obviously, it's this got this like wh- wacky fantasy thing that they're going for. But I need to see something more tangible. Like, I feel like they're kind of uh, I don't know. I it, it, it actually makes me concerned um, that something is going like wildly wrong with this game because they seem very afraid to show it off when allegedly it's coming like next year. Yeah, it's I don't know. I, I don't think that had a date, though. I don't think it said like 2025. Did it? I don't think so. 
I, I thought it did. Get it? I, I, I feel like it's, uh, I don't know if it's this, I'm sure that I've heard that it's supposed to be coming out okay. next year. I don't know if that's just a tentative release schedule or. Well, that would make the most sense because like, I feel like they can't afford to wait much longer. Right. But anyway, yeah, not, not. But they could at least impressed. like show us something other than these short, like vignettes. Like I, I, I don't, I don't even know what the point of this year or last year's showing Sir Fable is. Well, they keep showing that girl, right? Like the main character, I guess. But then like. I don't know. What is she? Is she like the fable? I don't, I don't know how fable works. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know anything. No, the the idea is that you plant a tree at the beginning of the game and then it turns out Molyneux was a big fat liar and that's not the case after all. That's what fable is. (laughs) Molyneux is is built his whole career off of lies. Um, Anyway. (laughs) Guys, Winterboro has to be the least Xbox game that's ever Xboxed. That's that. That was that little game with the little mice, like trying to hide them. Save oh, yeah. their family. Yeah, the two D. Oh, like the storybook looking thing. Yeah. yeah, I was pleasant. I was expecting to see a lot of hate for this on the. No, people are really looked like they were wanting to play this on on social after the show wrapped up and i hope that's the case for this one it releases i looked into the developers i already forgot who they are because they don't really have a resume at this time so uh that definitely I, looked I, like it belonged in a nindy's showcase it did. you know I, I, I hope this goes somewhere for them um I was not impressed by Indiana Jones. I was really bored. I was almost pulling a Kevin and pressing the 10, 10 second skip. I didn't, <laughs> but like I, I felt like it. I, I'm the Indiana Jones liker here, so I'll say it. This is the game I try for a whim for 15 bucks in the bargain bin. And definitely not the high end production by Bethesda. They keep presenting this to us as. Well, people keep saying like they don't like that it's first person. And I don't think that's the problem. I just. It's not. I problem. just don't. I just don't like it. I don't know. There's something about it that is not appealing. They showed something at the Xbox showcase called Mecha Break. They also showed this at Summer Games Fest, but what they showed here at Xbox is way better than what they showed there. And it actually looked really cool. Just your typical fast-paced mech game. It looked like your, you know, Damon X Machina or whatever recently has come out in that kind of style, Armor Core 6, whatever. I think this looks really cool and I'm interested. Um, last year, we talked about Avowed quite a bit. I wasn't really that I didn't really have a whole lot more to say about it here. It just kind of looks the same as it did before, Kevin. I I don't know. It's just Yeah, oh, I was I was into it before and I'm still into it. I'm I'm looking forward to playing this. I really like the like color palette they've used. Everything's like kind of bright and neon but still in a fantasy setting. So I mean, if it sounds like it's going to go downhill real fast, that'll be unfortunate, but yeah, I'll probably uh, play this on Game Pass right when it comes out. I think it looks looks cool. By Obsidian, right? Obsidian? Mhm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I guess it looks like which a, I mean that's you know that in itself is is intriguing. Yeah, I I always like their work. So I guess just based on that alone, I'm just I'm keeping an eye on it. I don't know. I guess it looks a little less like a fake video game than it did last year, but it's coming out real soon. So I hope that's good for you. Is this supposed to be this year? <laughs> I thought they said fall. Yeah. I oh, think. really? Okay. So yeah. it is soon. Yeah. I think they they've said for a while 2024 at okay. least. Okay. Okay. Although Adam Fall, I don't know what they were trying to do here. I, I feel like when you have everything aesthetically in here, it's not really anything. You had a foam booth on a meadow and climbing a mountain, and <laughs> yeah, comp- like uh, maybe it makes sense when you're playing the game. But we're talking about the way trailers are cut. Maybe this wasn't the trailer, you guys. Yeah, maybe, w- <laughs> maybe you cut something else. <laughs> I wasn't really into it from from what this showed. I, I didn't think it looked terrible. I was just mm-hmm. like, yeah, whatever. Next, and next was Gears of War E Day. Kevin, show me the money, motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, Andre's cashing in for for bets. I don't know. I feel like a winner too. I I'm fucking stoked about this. I'm glad that they have finally let Gears rest long enough and given it some time to breathe. And to be honest, like it, I I can see why people wouldn't be into this because going back to more Dom and Marcus isn't you know the inventive thing to do. But I, 
deep down, that's kind of just what I want. Mm -hmm. I hope they kind of like try and do less of the open world thing that they tried to do in five. Um, Just make it look super fucking pretty and like, let it be like, you know, classic gears of war with like satisfying cover shooting and chainsaw guns, ripping up guts. Um, And, you know, people could probably look at this as a cash in. And I think that'd be somewhat justified, but I'm, I'm here for it. No, I think this is what they need to do. They need to reestablish gears as this, as the thing people love before, and make mm-hmm. a really good one of those. Don't try to expand it. Gears is gears, and I'm not, I've never really been a gears mm-hmm. person. I'm going to be honest; I've never even really played one. They should put the original trilogy on Steam. I cannot believe you cannot play those on PC. I get it. Back then, it was yeah. different. Like you wanted to truly have a console console exclusive, but that time is like long past. I think like. It would benefit them to have. Can you get gears stuff. on the Epic Store though on PC? Is that oh, is that where it's maybe you? Fucking that's probably what's going on. Can. Maybe that is what's going There's on. There's probably a reason it's not on Steam. That is true. I didn't really think about that, and if I thought about it for two more seconds, I would have came to that conclusion. However, I think even that, like they should be on steam i feel like that's the thing people want i mean like i can't especially with the advent of the steam deck and i know i'm like keeping up for it because i have one now but like that's i can't play stuff from the epics game store right so like i think they're losing out on some audience but no i don't think those games i'm not even sure that they're there i think those have always been like straight up xbox 360 exclusives but well, I know like the first Gears the was, was definitely on PC. Was it? Maybe it's like a Halo thing where like yeah, the first like one was on PC and then like the rest of them are not. OK, before we go, that'll be our final thing. I'll look it up. Do you think they are on the Epic Game Store? Yes or no, Steve? No. OK, Kevin. Yeah, I, I bet you at least the first one. Is. OK, at least the first one. I think none of them are on the Epic Game Store. Let's see if we're right. All right, we're back. No Gears of War is on the Epic Game Store. None. Hmm. So <laughs> they are they are not available to play on PC at all. I feel like that's that should change. I I can't believe that's the case, I, but I feel like it might with with this news. Yeah. I, I'm surprised it's especially surprising given like they did the remaster during the Xbox One era, right? Yeah. Why? They should they should do a like like Halo MCC, uh, Master Chief Collection. They should have that for Gears of War, mm. I think. But whatever. Anyway, that's enough out of us. We talked a lot about the Vidya games. I promise next time there will be more dick jokes. I guess we did take a shower, but we didn't talk about our dicks. We'll talk about our dicks next time on Fine Time, I promise. Check the description of this podcast to find our links to social media. And we'll see you next time. Bye. We'll catch you next time. This has been Fine Time. I mean, it better not be because you get the weird, uh, it's, cr- cr- excuse me, the sound's crunchy as hell. And then you get the Ocarina of Town, li- Ocarina of Town, Ocarina of Time, uh, l- you know, link sound bite. Start, start, please, please start <laughs> over. Please start over. Please. <laughs> please. Too hot please here. don't make me edit that. Please, God. <laughs> <sighs>